Hello, I'm Reza Rad, and in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about what are the top five mistakes um, that Power BI developers do, Power BI users, when they are developing Power BI applications. I've seen in my consulting engagements, in training sessions that I had, uh, some of the most common mistakes, and I'm going to talk about these. These are things that you should avoid in order to have a better Power BI implementation. Let's see what they are. So let's talk about these mistakes. The mistakes, uh, the mistake number one, which I see a lot, is that trying um, Power BI developers, Power BI users, at the beginning of their Power BI journey, they start trying making all relationships both directionals. Uh, what is a relationship? A relationship, in short, is a, a way that if a table filters another table. Now, um, the direction of relationship means which table filters uh, which table. Like, for example, if I have dim date and uh, fact table and dim date has one single direction or relationship to the fact table, uh, then date table can filter fact table, but fact table cannot filter the date table. So because of that, because users want in filtering in a lot of different directions, uh, I see this commonly uh, happening that uh, people change it to uh, to both directionals. Changing to both directional is easy from the UI point of view, but it has a big cost. The cost is performance, the cost is ambiguity in the relationships, and of course you cannot make all the relationships both directional because it will create circular dependency. Um, I have explained these all in different videos and articles, which links of those are down in the articles below. Um, for each of these mistakes I talk about, there are three, four different articles and videos I refer to and how to solve it. But uh, usually both directional relationships comes from the lack of uh, proper modeling, a good relationship. So the, uh, a good relationship, good table design, star schema, things like that. So the solution for that is to change uh, to a proper modeling, star schema design, fact tables, dimensions, create single directional floor and dimension table to the fact table. And I also explained situations that you want one dimension to filter another dimension without both directional relationship, how you can do that. You can use visual level filters. You can also use some of the DAX functions in specific situations such as cross filter to apply these kind of things, but not changing the relationship itself. Uh, so that is mistake number one I see a lot. Mistake number two, uh, loading data without transforming it. This also happens a lot because Power BI gives you the ability to connect to any data sources you want and bring data in and do visualization. We see this happening a lot. So this is a great feature that you can connect to Google Analytics, you can connect to Salesforce, you can connect to Azure SQL database or even Excel file or CSV file sitting in your hard drive. This is a fantastic feature. It's the self-service ability in Power BI. But what is the problem? If you connect to a proper data warehouse like in Azure Synapse or Azure SQL database, data warehouse designed, uh, then you have fact tables, dimension tables properly designed for reporting. But if you connect to a source system such as CRM system, an Excel file, the design of tables is not ideal for ideal for the reporting. Uh, you may have, like if you connect to a CRM system, you may have 200 tables, 1000 tables. If you load them all in Power BI, then you end up with a really huge model with so many relationships. That is also one of the re reasons why both directional relationship happens. So all of these problems and challenges happens because uh, because of the way that you brought these tables. This database design, this table design that you are populating is designed for the source system, for the operational system. It's not ideal for reporting system. In reporting system, we want fast results. We want re less relationships between tables. We design it differently. We change it to something we call a star schema. We create dimension tables. We create fact tables. Fact and dimension tables are normally flattened. So you may combine two, three different tables into one dimension table and create a multiple of these dimension tables connected to a fact table using single directional relationship. So the solution for this is to redesign your model. This is something called as dimensional modeling, star schema design. Um, there are different names for that, but uh, the idea is that you have to change 
the structure. You do not load all the tables in the data source that you need and just load it as is. You will change that. You will transform that. Some of the tables will be combined. Some of them will be loaded, created relationship. Again, I have explained all of these as different articles about how to do these designs and what are the principles of that. Mistake number three. Uh, I see this happens also quite often that people uh, start writing calculations instead of transformation. So in Power BI, you can create calculations easily. There are different options in Power BI Desktop. When you are in Power BI Desktop, you can easily find where to create calculations, but you may not be able to easily find where to do data transformations because data transformations opens a different window, Power Query editor window, but um, but writing calculations is just within Power BI Desktop and it is a DAX formula, which is at the beginning looks like an Excel formula. So people tend to use it a lot. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. Best way to understand this is a good example. Uh, let's say I have a table like this. This is a table that has uh, budget information. So this budget information, I have like one column per month let's say this is fiscal month or whatever, and one row per year. This is normally how you get the budget data from the finance team, which is which is great, of course. Uh, but then if I load this in Power BI just like this, what I end up with is um, I end up with a lot of requirement. For example, I want to see what is the budget of each year, like 2010, what is the budget? The whole year, not every month. What is the budget of 2012? So I, I need to create a new column calculated column or measure, whatever you might call it. And that would be month one plus two plus three all the way to 12. So that would be one calculation. Then I need um, like a um, calculation for budget for quarter one. So a new calculation, month one, two, three together. Quarter two, month four to six, quarter three, quarter four, uh, half year one, half year two, you see, we end up with a lot of different calculations just because the data is not in the right shape. What we should be doing is to transform this data into something like this, where we have the year and month as column value, as the values inside a column, rather than having them as separate columns. We call this process unpivoting. And in Power Query, we have a transformation for this very easily. You just use the UI. You don't even need to write formula. So you do that transformation and then connect this to your date table. Uh, which I explained again how this all pro how this process all can work out, um, and that's it. Then your date table has attributes for such as um, columns, fields. I mean, such as uh, year, quarter, month, whatever, and you can slice and dice your data easily without writing even a single calculation for those that I mentioned to you. Right. So this is an example that um, if. Uh, as a user, I don't know about that transformation. I will go ahead and do that calculation instead. So I'll, I'll do hard coding. I'll do a lot of extra work where this should be actually transformed. So to find out why, um, what are the situations for this, you need to understand what transformations we have available. So go and study about different transformations. Think about transforming and reshaping data before doing the calculations. Calculations is like the final step you should get to um, reshape your data, get it into the right format using the existing transformations in Power Query, using T-SQL in the data source or any other methods, you know. And then once you loaded the data, once the shape is defined, you go for um, more like um, calculations and analytics. Mistake number four, uh, overuse of tax measures. Um, again, happens a lot. Uh, DAX measures are fantastic. It gives you ability to slice and dice data in a dynamic way. You click on a slicer, you click on a chart, you click on a visual, it filters other visuals. All of your calculations uh, evaluates uh, instantly based on that. A year to date will be for that customer you selected. It would be for the product that you selected, for the like period that you selected. All of those things will be calculated dynamically. DAX measures are powerful, but what we see is the overuse of that a lot. Like you see a model with a thousand different DAX measures. And not only this will um, reduce the performance when you create like um, more calculations, when you have them into Power BI as a report in one visual in one report, having so many measures, especially if they are not written in the right way, cause performance issues. Like when you have a lot of measures in 
a matrix in a table visual, which is sliced and diced by all different uh, variables as well. So these measures are evaluated like uh, thousands of times, uh, all happening runtime. Then when you click on a slicer, you see all of those circles rounding, rounding, rounding and thinking because DAX measures are all calculated runtime. The fact is that not every calculation needs to be runtime. Some of the calculations can be pre-calculated. That is the difference between measure and calculated column or doing the calculation prior loading to Power BI using Power Query or T-SQL, whatever the data source language you want to use. Uh, so solution for this is to think of what calculations can be done as a pre-calculated, not try, try not to do everything as DAX measures. They are great, but they comes at a cost. If especially you have too many of those, you may have performance issues. So try to use each calculation in the right place. If this is something you can do as a pre-calculation, like profit, sales minus cost, you might create a column for that and then use that column in your DAX measure, things like that. And mistake number five, I see this also happening many times, is that um, as a Power BI developer, when you need an entity, a calculation, a function, again, in another situation, you would rewrite it or you would copy it instead of reusing it. Um, if you are building like your first model, perhaps you won't face this at the very beginning. After some time, you'll feel the need. For example, uh, like you build your first Power BI file, then you are building your second Power BI file and you realize that in this second Power BI file, you also need a date dimension and you already created date dimension in the first file. So you either go and recreate the date dimension in the second file, which is not a good idea because then it might not have all the steps you did in the first file. It might not be exactly the same. You will have like two different versions. Another thing is that you would go to the first file and copy the code like Power Query or whatever it is, bring it into uh, the new file. And that would also cause some other problems because in the future, whenever you want to update this Power BI's date dimension, you want to add a couple of columns to that, you have to go to and fix it in both places. Um, so the idea is that try to reuse uh, what you have done. Different parts of Power BI, we have different components for reuse. For example, this, this specific situation that I talked about, you can use data flows. You can create a date dimension in a data flow or inside the data warehouse, then reuse that in as many as Power BI files you want. Then you will have only one single version of truth. Uh, if you want to use a calculation in multiple visualization, then you would define it as a measure or calculations inside Power BI with a live connection to other Power uh, BI files um, or let's say composite model with direct query to the Power BI data set. If you have a visualization setting that you want to be applied on other visuals, you would use Power BI themes. Power BI template is also another um, good option to use in different situations. So there are different components in Power BI, different tool sets that you can use to uh, avoid rewriting, avoid copying and reuse instead. This is a big important step again. Uh, so in general, um, it is quite important to know what mistakes to avoid. These are five top mistakes that I've seen in my engagement, in consulting, in training that I've seen. What are mistakes that you uh, felt? Please let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We at Radicat provide training and consulting on Power BI, helping you to become an expert. So if you want to reach out and uh, get help, let me know. Uh, until next video, goodbye.